Good evening. I'm Tobin Anderson, and I want to welcome you all to what promises to be a very special event, the first preview performances of Eric Nielsen's new chamber opera, Alzheimer's, with a libretto by Dana Walrath. This evening has been three years in the making, and you'll be getting just a taste tonight to whet your appetite for the full production, which will be coming down the line. Uh, tonight, on one piano, um, Alison Cerruti will give us an accompaniment that will eventually be scored for an entire ensemble. The extraordinary Mary Bonhag, uh, uh, as Alice, our protagonist, who lived with dementia for close to two decades, will tell us her story. As you probably know, producing a full-length opera is a very expensive undertaking. So I want to draw your attention to the uh, baskets in the rear of the sanctuary. If you like what you see this evening and you want to support the opera going forward, uh, please consider making a tax-deductible donation through the opera's fiscal sponsor, which is the uh, Monteverdi Music School. Everyone involved in the production thanks you. And finally, we hope you will all stick around after the performance for a panel discussion where the performers, Dana and Eric, will be happy to answer any questions you may have. And then the uh, traditional um, uh, uh, invocations uh, of any event like this, uh, take out your cell phone, take a good look at it, will it remain quiet through the whole performance? The, there are two exits, the one you came in on, in, uh, and there's a, uh, uh, an emergency exit back here. Please keep your mask on for the entire performance. And fourth, um, Dana and Eric have asked, asked me to read this uh, a statement about um, the uh, Abenaki land that we all are on, which is becoming, I think, more and more a standard practice in Vermont venues, uh, as we remember this. We want to honor the legacy of Vermont's indigenous people, the Abenaki people of the dawn, who have cared for this land for generations and continue to do so. We recognize that colonialism and the oppression of native peoples are a current and ongoing process, and we commit to building our awareness of our present participation. We pay our respects to the elders, past and present. We honor with deep gratitude this land and all it gives us. And now, please enjoy this preview of Alzheimer's, a chamber opera, as the curtain rises on Broccoli. <laughs>
but I know the truth. I want ice cream, you scream. It's sweet coolness slides down my throat. And it's summer, and she's here. Severed and boils appears. It's hard eyes to ever saw kids. Mama tells me I'm lucky. Not to be starving, not to march in the desert. Good evening, I'm Eric Nielsen, and before I say anything else, I have a number of thank yous to make. Thanks to Bethany Church for allowing us to hold our event here. Thanks to Tobin Anderson for hosting. Many thanks to those who donated to make this evening possible. Special thanks to Marion Allison for bringing our words and music to life. And of course, thank you all for coming. Together, Dana and I created the opera, Alzheimer's, based on Dana's graphic memoir of the same name about her life with her mother, Alice, and dementia. 
After the successful second run of my first opera, A Fleeting Animal, in 2015, I knew I wanted to write another work in the genre, something that had social relevance but was very different from A Fleeting Animal. I thought of creating a vehicle for a single singer, namely Mary. But even after she agreed, I couldn't find a suitable subject until my wife, Jackie, suggested I check into Dana's work. Once I saw the description of her memoir, Alzheimer's, on her website, I was hooked. And we went from there. Often the arc of an opera is chronological. And generally speaking, that's also true with Alzheimer's. But the first act is anything but that. As we follow Alice's present tense from today, to her childhood, to her dreams, to her fantasies, to her realization that she can no longer live with her daughter. The second act then follows her seven year journey in care to the end of her life. Tonight, you'll see about half the work, with scenes from Act One and Act Two. While there is only piano accompaniment this evening, in a full production, there will be an ensemble of 10 instruments. And on stage, along with Alice, will be a silent actor-dancer who will take on several parts during the course of the opera. We are delighted that Crystal Brown will be taking that role. Working with Dana's libretto, and Alice's story has been a wonderful challenge for me. And I'm so grateful that I can be here tonight to share a first glimpse of the fruits of our labor with all of you. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. And here's Dana. And thank all of you for coming out tonight. When Eric approached me about the opera, I had to say yes. Alice loved opera. For her, opera was a way into the American dream. The brown daughter of refugees of the Armenian Genocide, young Alice first listened to Saturday afternoon's Metropolitan Opera radio broadcasts while she was cleaning other people's New York City apartments. For the rest of her life, she tuned in each week. She and my father Dave had a subscription, and when Dave couldn't make it on account of work, I was the kid who went in his place. Now the opera, like the first book, which I have the first book, and a sequel, which is a work in progress, replaced, and the opera, yes, replaced the flattened dementia story of loss and fear and stigma and shame with one that restores the humanity of people living with dementia. Now what better way to do this than to tell the story, let Alice tell the story. Um, and this is what Eric envisioned, and I just thought, wow, I've got to do this. Now um, together we get to show the magic and the healing and the laughter that's possible in the midst of loss. Now before you get too worried about the magic part, let me tell you what I mean by magic. Magic is mysterious, naturally occurring phenomena which so far, at any rate, has eluded scientific inquiry. Love is magic. Music is magic. And so is story, and opera has it all. Now, Alice's story is universal. We're born, we live, we die, but if we're lucky, along the way, we also heal. So what's healing? Healing is being seen and being heard of being loved and loving others, of letting our co collective memories meet. It's forgiving others, and it's forgiving ourselves. And the story of this opera is Alice's use of dementia to heal. Now, because tonight we're only presenting selections, and the opera, of course, is a whole story, we have to ground you along the way. So for the rest of the evening, I'm going to come in between uh, the different beautiful music and give you excerpts from the book or the sequel or the libretto to fill in gaps and to pull you forward in the story. In the next scene, Mama No, Alice works through the shame and the guilt that she felt towards her younger brother, Antranik, who was named for a general, 
adored by his big sister Rose, and was born with an extra chromosome 21. Now before dementia, I only knew that I had an uncle with Down syndrome. I didn't even know his name. That's how great Alice's shame was. I knew that he had died young, the third of Papa's sons to meet death at a tender age. The other two were among the 1.5 million Armenians who perished in the genocide. Now Alice said that Papa was never happy with his daughters. She said well, that he would be like, well, why are they the ones that were survived instead of the sons? But during dementia, Alice told me what she really felt. She said, when Mama and Rose mopped the floor, it was my job to mind him on the street corner. People stared and called him names like they did on the bus, and I was glad when he was gone.
Fairy Pirates. Alice escapes the captivity of Alzheimer's through story. Pirates, the ultimate hostage takers, often lend her a hand. I haven't seen these pirates myself, but it's clear they are pirates with a dashing Johnny Deafness. For the crimson glow of the young bird Lancaster, Alice sings with them. They laugh together on the ship or the island. Hints of another Burt Lancaster beach scene seem to linger about her after they let her go, famished but content. I like these pirates.
The biggest gift Alice gave me took place that first spring that she lived with us. We were driving along the same country road that we took to get everywhere. Where are we? How did I get here? You're in Vermont. You moved in with us a while ago because you have Alzheimer's disease and it isn't safe for you to live alone. Oh, I forgot. What a lousy thing to have. Big stands of 
lilacs in full bloom surrounded the homes we passed, their scent filling the air. You live here? It's pretty. Cows and fresh young calves chomp the green grass down to tufts in fenced fields. Hay ripened in others. Alice put her hand on my shoulder. Promise me you'll do something else when it gets too hard. I promised, wondering how he would ever recognize that moment. of the 
hall. Open, shut. White coats in and out. Sometimes towing a prisoner. I wait like a hunter tracking his prey. Just a musical interlude. Together they honor the extraordinary care work done in this country, primarily by black and brown people, many of whom are new Americans from the global south, who up in Burlington greeted Alice like this. Hey, mama. <laughs> These two scenes show the love, flexibility, generosity, and creativity. These carers bring daily to their essential work. Ready? 
she takes food. 